Welcome to Take Another Look, a public affairs show bringing you current events, news, and information you can use. Cancer affects millions of people in the United States with an estimated 1.6 million new cases being diagnosed in 2016. With all the pink ribbons, t-shirts, cups, and balloons, it's hard to miss the fact that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Cancer has touched many families, and there are many struggling to deal with the mental, physical, and financial challenges that come with the diagnosis. Allison Volks, community manager for the American Cancer Society, partnered with Village of Dalton Mayor Riley Rogers for the second straight year to lend support to cancer survivors and their families, as well as continuing to encourage others to search for a cure. Welcome to this edition of Take Another Look, Allison. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, let's start with the breakfast. This is the second year in a row, of course, you've partnered with Mayor Rogers and the Village of Dalton. Uh, what were your thoughts on that breakfast and the amount of people still coming out to share their testimonies and let people know that there's someone there for them to go through this fight against cancer with them? It was invigorating to see how many people are really committed to bringing an end to breast cancer. There are so many individuals and families who are suffering and dealing and trying to make sense of a breast cancer diagnosis. And so for the city of Dalton to host such an empowering and encouraging event means so much. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, there are so many different types of cancer. You know, this is uh, a huge breast cancer awareness month. We see the football players with the pink cleats and the towels. Um, but there are many other types of cancers that people are dealing with as well, correct? Absolutely. Cancer uh, seems to continue to reinvent itself. Mm -hmm. There is lung cancer, which is number one among women. There's prostate cancer, which is a, a popular among men. All different types of cancer. Um, thyroid cancer, blood cancer, and there seems to be just an epidemic of cancer um, in our communities. Now, money was raised for uh, the fight uh, for a cure, uh -huh. but uh, sometimes it seems like an uphill battle. I mean, you just mentioned that there are so many different types of cancers, and sometimes I think people look at it and they think it's a daunting task to actually find the solution, find the cure. Really, the only thing we really see people talking about is managing the treatment and reducing the pain or the discomfort. Right, and that's important. Um, the American Cancer Society, our uh, purpose, our mission is to help people live well and to be healthy. Uh, the fact is there are so many people who are dealing with cancer. And so the awareness that we create, the funds that we raise, not just our organizations, but all kinds of um, other organizations as well, it's to help people who are actually dealing with it be able to handle it. There's so many different dynamics associated with um, a cancer diagnosis. How am I going to get to treatment? How am I going to pay for treatment? What am I going to do about my hair that's falling out? How am I going to pay for my medicine? Um, why is this happening to me? Who can I talk to? And a whole other list of questions and um, problems associated with the cancer diagnosis. So having the breakfast like the Village of Dalton and other events and fundraisers and awareness activities are helpful because they allow organizations like American Cancer Society to be able to respond to those needs. They are real needs. We do want a cure for cancer, but while we are waiting for a cure, we must um, help those who need the help. Now it's clear, you know, as you speak to me today and the other times I've heard you speak, uh, your convictions and your efforts on behalf of uh, uh, cancer awareness, they're, they're deep, they're deeply seated, and even sometimes you, you become a little bit emotional. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about how you became active in the fight to, um, I guess, uh, assist those who are struggling with cancer? Absolutely. It, I was involved even before I really knew that I was involved. I had uncles, I had family members who were diagnosed with cancer and had no real understanding of how to help. Uh, my dad, who was an active, worked in the steel mill, cut trees, I mean, just a superman all around, got a prostate cancer diagnosis in 2000, um, the year escapes me at this moment, 2002, and a year later after his diagnosis, he died. And I watched him go from this strong, uh, virile man to a vegetable. And I did not know how to help. So 
it kind of began there. And then several years later, I was um, blessed to be the coordinator of a small uh, cancer. It was a group for domestic violence, cancer, and HIV AIDS. But my passion became those who were dealing with cancer, specifically breast cancer, because they seemed at the time to have the most needs. And so um, my role was really to help them once a month deal with the breast cancer, um, talk to their family and friends about it. Um, how do I deal with the sim symptoms? Can you help me get uh, reduced med medication? And in not being able to help them for whatever reason, I wanted to do more and soon transition to the American Cancer Society. Mm. Now, have we reached a tipping point? I mean, uh, at one time, uh, it was a stigma associated with being a cancer victim. Maybe if you were a lung cancer uh, victim, then people said, well, you smoke and that's why, or you know, diet perhaps was a reason. But are we at a tipping point now where people who are afflicted with cancer seems like they're, they're empowering themselves now and saying that they're not going to be a victim and it doesn't necessarily, I know people who die, I knew a person who actually died from lung cancer who wasn't a smoker. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the chemicals in these different buildings, we have different things all around us, but have we reached the tipping point as it relates to uh, the awareness factor and cancer and the ways to prevent it? Absolutely. I think I was just sharing um, a couple of weeks ago that when cancer uh, breast cancer, for example, was first introduced. It was about 2,500 years ago in Egypt, and it was seen as taboo. I mean, voodoo. You did not tell anyone that you had breast cancer. Your family found out at the funeral home when they saw your body and that your breast area had been affected. Um, because since then, 2,500 years later, I think that families, individuals are realizing that the silence that was acceptable back then does not help the cause. And so, yes, there is greater awareness. People are more vocal about it because we, they are understanding that um, the silence is ineffective. People need to know that you are dealing with cancer, not just so that they can help, but so that um, you can participate in research and life-saving trials that will hopefully move us closer to a cure. Um, I share often with people, uh, they ask, you know, what, what do the walks do? What do the fundraisers do? And I call that the beautiful side of cancer, um, the pink out loud. And I think it's necessary because cancer in itself is ugly. And there's nothing that we can do to help those who are actually dealing with the cancer, but the, the beautiful side, the pink side, allows us to be able to help, mm -hmm. to um, help provide medication, to help provide rights to treatment, to help some of what's needed to be able to deal with the ugly side of it. So yes, uh, awareness is continuing to grow. You should hear more about cancer, breast cancer, because people are understanding how necessary it is to continue to share the message and to continue to make as many people aware as possible. Now, of course, you know, Mayor Rogers is really passionate about the topic. I uh, wanted to make sure that uh, we again had a breast cancer survivors mm -hmm. breakfast. And that was very important to him because often uh, it seems like it's a death sentence when people say I've got cancer, or, I've, I've been diagnosed. Mm -hmm. And it's important to talk to, about those people and talk to those people who have survived to let them know that there is another side to it and you can overcome it. Some of the uh, prices, I guess, for, for the medicine, can you give us a range about uh, what a yearly uh, estimate would be for someone who is dealing with treatment? Oh, wow. Such an excellent question, and it varies. I, I don't have a specific answer. What I can tell you is that from my own experience, um, Cancer medication can cost anywhere from hundreds of dollars to thousands of dollars. I had a friend who, um, just for uh, one month, her cancer medication was $385, which is more than she will ever 
be able to afford. Mm -hmm. And it varies. It varies depending on the type of cancer, the type of treatment, just so many different factors. But it hundreds of dollars is the average uh, minimal cost, and it can grow into the thousands. That's something I noticed at the cancer walk. Uh, there was an there was there was an important distinction. Well, I won't say a distinction, but there's a focus on the newly diagnosed, and then there was a focus on the survivors, and focus on those who were terminal. It's like they they kind of divided them into sections uh, because there are different needs depending on where someone is at that particular moment uh, when they find out that they have cancer. Yeah, we did not divide them. They typically divide themselves. Mm -hmm. I am uh, very intentional about specifying newly diagnosed survivors and metavivors and including them all together mm -hmm because to me, they are all survivors. When you are told you have cancer, you have breast cancer, from that moment on, you have to decide that you're going to live, that you're going to survive. Newly diagnosed don't see themselves as survivors, which is why we have to call them out and include them in that number. They, because as you mentioned earlier, Many people believe that cancer is a death sentence and um, newly diagnosed want to go through the process before they consider themselves survivors. Yes. But in my opinion, um, surviving the diagnosis makes you a survivor, not surviving the treatment, surviving the chemotherapy or anything else that you have to go through as a part of that process. But the fact that you are still here today and deciding to live makes you a survivor. And that includes the metavivors as well. There are so many individuals who are diagnosed with cancer and breast cancer, for example, and then it metastasizes into other areas. Um, you're still a survivor, regardless to um, how many types of cancer you have. The fact that you're still here, the fact that you're still fighting to me, makes you a survivor. And of course, the donations that come to the American Cancer Society enable that group to assist others uh, free of charge, is that correct? Yes, at the American Cancer Society, a lot of people aren't aware of this, but all of our programs and resources and services are completely free to cancer patients to, and their families and to anyone. And having the walks, doing the fundraisers, allow us to continue to provide those services free and to continue to fund life-saving research that draws us closer to a cure. All right. Well, thank you so much, Allison, for spending some time with us here on Take Another Look. Tell us, uh, anyone who is watching this episode of Take Another Look, how they can contact you or how they can assist and become a part of the fight against cancer. Wonderful. Uh, anyone who's interested can visit our website, which is just cancer.org. We also have a phenomenal cancer information line, and the number is 800-227-2345. Really simple to remember. Um, and I can be reached through either one of those um, numbers as well. All right. Thank you very much. You. We've just spent time with Allison Volks, Community Manager for the American Cancer Society on Take Another Look. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.